Today you're in for a rare treat, an inside look at the world's largest privately held video art collection at the San Francisco home of Richard and Pamela Kramlich. Well, we're really delighted you're all here. Thank you Thank so you for much. Coming. Thank you. Thank you. Over the last decade, the Kramlichs have acquired more than 200 media-based artworks, from low-tech VHS tapes and 35-millimeter slides to site-specific installations that involve multiple monitors and video projections. Their collection includes some of the earliest video artworks ever made, like this piece by Martha Rossler, entitled Semiotics of the Kitchen. Juicer. Many of these early works are autobiographical, with video artists acting as both maker and subject. In this one, by Vito Acconci, the artist systematically rips out all the hair from his belly. The Kramlick collection now spans the entire 40-something years of the video art form and is constantly expanding. Few collectors have the resources or the space to preserve and display video art. The Kramlicks understood the challenges and hired curator Christopher Eamon from the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York to maintain and expand their collection. And we have this installation work by Bill Viola over here, which actually requires a screen that's custom made with this custom, you know, shape. The uh, video shape has been masked so that the image fits. Over here is a Nam June Pike closed circuit, closed circuit television piece. It has a camera, it has a, it's a television Buddha where the Buddha looking at his own image in a monitor which is being um, captured by the, the TV camera, close circuit. There's no videotape involved in this whatsoever. It's just a, sort of a, a circuit. Over here is a Jeff Wall light box with a color, um, color transparency, backlit transparency. It's very famous for these fantastic um, illuminated photographs. Everything in this room is either is illuminated or moving, or both. The Kramlicks, I think, are, are well positioned because they go back and, and do collect the historical material. Sometimes that material hasn't survived very well. Material has to be transferred to disc, for example. It has to be played on different kinds of hardware. Everything is in constant flux. These are, this is the Warhol, uh, the Warhol kind of walk of fame. The Kramlicks live with their collection day in, day out. And that has created some challenges for Christopher, who is responsible for displaying the works throughout their home. Here in the breakfast room, that meant installing custom window shades to block ambient light from washing out the cat images produced by the Swiss video art team Fishley and Weiss. There are just many, many technical factors. That's a real um, challenge. And it's even more so when you're installing a work like that in the home. Very much like The Wizard of Oz. Sorry? I'm just switching the two. I don't know why there's no disc in there. Oh, well. Let's see if that will work. Uh, with video, uh, of course, media arts, uh, there are all the myriad presentation issues, electronic issues, electrical issues, uh, just a, a, a huge number of practical matters that have to be solved. Part of Christopher Eamon's job is to deal with preserving fragile video works and maintaining the equipment necessary to view them. But he also acts as talent scout for the Kramlick collection, scouring galleries and museums on both coasts in search of interesting works old and new. Once I get going with the gallery looking though, I, um, it's hard to stop. Like, it's hard to just visit one gallery. Hi, how are you? So... Not in the Mama show? This is all the stuff on Tony Orsler. These are two pieces called Cynthia Stock Ticker. The stock market's live, and the these video, they're, they're canned and they're reacting. So the mood is bad, so she's going into bed. You know, oh, voice. so is it actually reacting to the negative? The Dow Jones is down 1.3%, <laughs> so she's the drinking and it's depressed. She's in the park. Yeah, like th this morning she was like smoking and tapping her feet, and, like she was like in How a classroom with a this? gun. Take this too, because since it's an older document and Tony made it, oh, I'd yeah. be interested to see the smoke in it. Sure. Because they have the book and the no, book No, no, take it all. Take it all. I'm going to have my coffee in every shot. 
The last stop today is the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, where a group of video artists are presenting works based on a Japanese comic book character named An Lee. The An Lee Gallery's turned on for you. Very well, thanks. The show has gotten a lot of buzz in Europe and New York, and Christopher is checking it out as a potential addition to the Kramlik collection. Christopher is careful to keep his opinion about the show to himself. If a work warrants a recommendation to the Kramlicks, he doesn't want to tip off the art market in advance. And if he doesn't like the work, he doesn't want to jeopardize his professional relationships with artists and gallery owners. It's there, at the foot of Volcano, that the moon landing tests were filmed. Pressed for a reaction, Christopher will only say that two of the videos might be of interest. Since the Kramlicks first started collecting, video art has moved from the fringes of the art world to its very center, becoming a medium where artists working in different fields can collaborate. Tonight's event at the Kramlick home is a case in point. Legendary choreographer Merce Cunningham is showing video work made throughout the course of his long career, including Merce by Merce by Pike, his collaboration with video pioneer Nam June Pike. It's great to find people who are not looking for something to, uh, that's comfortable, that's safe, you know, that they're doing it because they have their own commitment and passion about it. And they're really committed to artists, uh, to, the, to the new vision that artists provide, the new ways of thinking that artists come up with. With artworks filling virtually every room in their San Francisco home, the question for the Kramlicks is where to put new works as they acquire them. The next step for them as collectors is the construction of a high-tech residence in the Napa Valley, a place where they can continue in their role as 21st century patrons of the arts.